and welcome back to Lisa's study guys. Today we're going to be talking about The Queen and Bransom. Let's hop right on in. Ransom is a novel by Australian author David Willoof, which focuses on a key event in the Trojan War between the Greeks and Trojans. When Achilles, the famed Greek soldier, loses his close friend Patrocles in battle, he seeks revenge on the killer Hector, also the son of Priam in the Trojan King. After he viciously kills Hector, Achilles proceeds to drag Hector's dead body through the dirt surrounding the walled city of Troy, as Priam and his family watch on. Unable to stand this anymore, Priam sets out to ransom for his son's body so he can bury it properly. We've done plenty of resources like videos and blogs on ransom before, so I'll leave them up in the card and in the description box below and spend a bit more time on the Queen. Set in the weeks leading to and post the infamous death of Princess Diana in 1997, the Queen captures the private moments of the monarchy's grief and loss and Queen Elizabeth II's inner conflict as she attempts to keep her private and public affairs separate. The film opens with Blair's landslide victory in the election as the youngest Prime Minister in almost 200 years, preempting viewers of the radical modernisation that's to come as he takes the reign. Juxtaposed with Blair's introduction is the stoic Queen Elizabeth II, residing in Buckingham Palace with bagpipes outside playing in a ritual unchanged since Queen Victoria, immediately establishing the entrenched traditional values she represents. Princess Diana's sudden death at the hands of relentless paparazzi results in turmoil in both the lives of those in the monarchy and adoring British citizens who mourn for the loss of the people's princess. As days ensue with no public response from the royal family, the British people grow in disdain towards the authority, demanding a more empathetic response. Caught in between the people and the monarchy is Blair, who sees the royal family's public image suffer as a result of inaction. Despite heavy resistance from the Queen, he eventually encourages her to surrender old royal protocols and adopt a more modern approach to meet public expectation, to fly the flag at half-mast, hold a public funeral, and publicly grieve for the loss of Princess Diana. All in all, to show the people that the monarchy actually cares. The Queen's decision to accept Blair's advice ultimately reconnects her with the British people and restores the royal family's reputation amongst the public. Themes, parenthood. In both texts, deaths act as a catalyst for both Priam and the Queen's personal change. For Priam, it is his son Hector, and for the Queen, her ex daughter in law Princess Diana. In Ransom, we learn of the familial sacrifice Priam has needed to make as a leader. His separation from loved ones is expected, as he has been asked to stand at a kingly distance from the human, which in his kingly role, he can have no part in. Up until Hector's death, Priam has been removed from paternal experiences, a sad truth when he admits that his relationship with his children were merely formal and symbolic, and a part of the splendour and the ordeal of kingship. Maloof demonstrates how Priam's royal obligations have suffocated his role as a father, and consequentially, he has been unable to connect with his family in the way he would desire to. While Priam's overt expressiveness in his limitations as a father may sway empathy from ransom readers, Queen Elizabeth's stoicism at first makes her appear cold-hearted and unfeeling. Her reaction to Prince Charles' desire to fly a private jet to see Diana in hospital is one more concerned of the media's reaction rather than of familial care and concern. Isn't that precisely the sort of extravagance they always attack us for? This isn't a matter of state. However, as the film unfolds, viewers come to understand that her stoicism doesn't necessarily come about because of her own personal choice, but rather because her role demands her of it. Tradition, change and the new. Both texts explore the challenging tug and pull between upholding traditions and making way for the new. As humans, we cherish traditions because they are customs or beliefs that have been passed on from generation to generation. They have sentimental value for us. And by continuing on these traditions, our actions show that we respect the path our elders have laid out for us. Tradition is not necessarily depicted in a negative light in either text, but rather shown to have its place. The Queen's resistance against sailing the flag half-mast is out of deference to her elders. 
Even so, Max's casual storytelling about his daughter-in-law's griddle cakes is customary as each time his son would set up the stones and her quick and light flipping of the cakes makes for family memories. However, Frears and Maloof both assert that adaptability in upholding tradition is also needed in order for us to grow and develop as humans. I further explore the idea of tradition and how it is important to invite change or the new in my blog, Ransom and the Queen. Here, I also discuss literary and cinematic techniques along with giving you some sample prompts. I'll make sure to put this valuable resource for you up above and in the description box below. And of course, if you're interested for something more, then I'd recommend you have a look and even go and download a free sample of my How to Write a Killer Comparative. This general ebook covers how to study for comparative, what you need to do to prepare for your SAC, and also offers you plenty of different structures you can adopt in your essay writing, along with comparative essay examples. That should give you plenty of resources to use in preparation for your SAC and exam. You know, you've got videos for visual learners, we've got blogs for people who prefer short reading, and study guides for those who like to go into a lot more detail. I'll be coming out with the Queen film techniques video very shortly so I'll catch you guys then bye